buddy. Get that game away from the band. Look, I don't want any trouble. Are you going to remove her or are we? What do you mean, are we going to? Dad, if there's going to be an argument about Jimmy singing, I'm with him. Yeah, I'm with him. Who are you with, me? Baby, let's dance. They don't appreciate your singing in this joint. You appreciate my singing, though, don't you, Dave? After you go, after you go. Hi, and welcome to Ward 13. Are we Ward 13 today? We sure are. My uh, guest host episodes. today is Matt Connerton. I'm back. I uh, was not here for the baseball show because, frankly, I would have been useless for that. You weren't. Uh, I don't even know how many quarters are in a game. I thought it was, is that what you usually use, the, the joke we usually that is, use? That is the, the, the joke I use every time, yes. <laughs> well, we have a unique show for you today. It comes in two parts. It's Ward 13, and then after a half hour, we're going to have our second, second edition of the Gatsis Gubernatoria Gala Tryouts. Can't wait. And uh, our guest today, Heather. Hi. Of <laughs> Blessing, right? Yes. I, uh, I have dyslexia and also my accent, accent was inherited from the west of England. So, you know, my friend, I was uh, Gary Hamer, Heidi, I was the best man at their wedding. We went to kindergarten through everything. And her sister was the, the maid of honor. Yeah. And she wants that a few years. When I came back from New Ham to New Hampshire after 38 years, she says, where's John from? She says, what do you mean where he's from? He's from here. <laughs> but I found out, because I belong to the Litchfield Historical Society, all the Hopwoods had a unique accent. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, you don't talk like someone who's from here. That's for certain. People in England, my brother lives in England for oh, almost 30 years. They think he's from Australia. Oh, really? Yeah. But <laughs> we finally figured it out, because he was from the west of England. Most people here are from East Anglia, yeah. which is where my brother lives. Heather, intro let's introduce yourself and why you're here today. Okay. Um, well, my name is Heather Willette Saigan, and I do uh, work with GLSEN New Hampshire. Uh, GLSEN is a national organization that has existed for 26 years. It started right in Boston um, by some teachers who um, wanted to be able to support their gay, lesbian, um, bisexual, and transgender students who were very closeted at that time. Um, in addition to that, I teach at Concord High School, and I facilitate our Gay and Straight Alliance there as well. And I heard you on the morning show with Peter White and the Moose, yes. Joel Elber. Yes. And you were on the show to announce there's going to be a prom, with Prom Out Loud 4. Would you like to tell the guests about that? Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, on uh, this Sunday, April 24th, we will be hosting a prom, Glisten, along with PFLAG and, and others in the state. Um, it's a safe prom, and it's a place where LGBT youth and their straight allies can come together um, and free to be themselves for an, ev for an evening um, when that's not always possible where they live or where they go to school. And... Um, we uh, it's from seven to eleven at the uh, Puritan back room right here in Manchester. Puritan back room, uh, Chris mm. Pappas, the great Chris Pappas, yeah. who I think someday is going to be the governor before he becomes like a senator. <laughs> yeah. I told him to skip Congress because you've met, you've met Chris Pappas, of course. I I haven't. Yeah, are you going to be there? Um, yes, I will be there. I'm a chaperone. Does, He's one of the great. Uh, does he own the Puritan? Oh yes, oh, families, okay. the Pappas family. Gotcha. The okay. Pappas family is so famous in Manchester that Nick Pappas, this kind of reactionary Republican, got elected to the board of aldermen just because he's a Pappas. Everybody mm. thinks he's Pappas. Yeah. Now, the name Hopwood didn't help me. <laughs> and, uh, I just wanna, when you said safe, what, what do you mean? You said it's a safe prom. What does that mean? Um, well, it, it means that uh, we're not going to tolerate any bullying or harassing or, you know, they can bring, students can bring a, a date or not, and they can bring a date that, uh, you know, is, if they're gay, they can bring their boyfriend, if they're lesbian, yeah. they can bring their girlfriend, some kids come single, um, but they, they don't have to worry about being harassed or bullied or, or anything like that. And yeah. I mean, and there are still places, believe it or not, in 2016 where they won't let a student bring their right. you know, same-sex partner to the prom. I think so. that's called the South. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what about New Hampshire? This is a prom for uh, LGBT youth for all over the state, is yes. it not? Yes, yes. We okay. have students coming from all over. Um, we have kids coming from the, the seacoast, from the Monadnock region, from up north. Um, yeah, all over. How, how well, well attended are they in the, in the well, house? we've uh, last year we had about seventy. Wow. About seventy students. This year we think it might be bigger. We think we might have to turn kids away. We're kind of worried we're going to have to turn kids away. Wow. It might. Huh. I'm going to run. Uh, John, can we run the video B about the prom and uh, live mics if you want to talk when it's run running. Mm. So, oh, that's why I brought the Oscar. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are some flyers from our past so proms this... and some of our other um, uh, themes. Last year we were Quest for Camelot, we had a medieval theme. Huh. Um, so there's a theme each year. Each year. So this year it's glam, rock, and glitter in honor of David Bowie. Oh, okay. Um, David Bowie, who, when I was a youth, he, he, he was openly bisexual. Afterwards, he kind of uh, had his hetero, a long heterosexual phase. Yes. Yeah, well, it was marriage. unusual. <laughs> yes. He was married to uh, uh, and Or if you want to talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there are just some pictures of members of GLSEN and, and some of our youth that... Uh, this was uh, a few years ago at UNH at the oh. huge bullying convention or anti-bullying convention. Uh, this was at Portsmouth Pride last year. We we marched in Portsmouth Pride, um, the first the first ever one. Um, these are some. That's our board from a few years ago. We have a photographer every year. See, there's the taking, Oscars. Yes, that oh, was our yes. Hollywood themed oh. year. Yeah. Cool. So that's um, Bobby Berry. She's we call her the the grandmother of all things gay in New Hampshire. She's <laughs> with, with P flag. Um, she's she's been. Um, She's been oh. an advocate for a long time. What okay. is Pete Flag? Is it a parents' uh, parents' friend? Yeah, it's it's a family uh, organization that really supports families who um, might be struggling or just need support, um, and, and to find out services about their uh, about their child or now, loved one. I briefly came back to New Hampshire, two thousand two thousand one. The, I lived in California for many years, and the weather would always drive me back. That and my family, but we won't get into that. And. Uh, <laughs> I remember a friend of mine, who originally from one of the good, you know, I don't know if I can use the word, Tony suburbs of uh, Boston. She came up here, very liberal, and this was in the Seacoast area at their high school, but not Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. There was a lesbian girl, 16 or 17, and her parents decided to ship her off, like, to the deep south, to yeah. like an aunt or anything. Oh, great. Uh, or <laughs> aunt or something. And I remember my friend, one, was part of a group. She wasn't a teacher per se. She was more, you know, volunteered to help mm -hmm. at the school, and trying to help the girl. Mm -hmm. In the end, she got shipped off to some, you know, like uh, not Auntie M in Kansas. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> some uh, good God, we don't know. And uh, <laughs> is that the do, does that still happen fifteen years later? There are still. Uh, there are still youth who can't tell their families yeah. because they are in danger of, of losing their place to live. Um, and, and a disproportionate number of homeless youth are LGBT youth have, who have you know, been t kicked out of their homes. It's frustrating. It's like we were, we were talking uh, off air before the show, you know, and I, I said it's, um, you know, here we are in the year 2016 and this is still a problem. Yeah. You know, and, and we really should have by now societally and culturally moved beyond all this mm -hmm. and all the, all the hang-ups, but we're still... It's getting better, obviously, but but we're still stuck there in so many ways. Well, in Manchester, New Hampshire, Candia, there is a there was a controversy for our, uh, last week and the week before. Candia and is right is a town right next to Manchester, northwest of Manchester on 101, mm -hmm. going out to the seacoast, and. The Candia School Board was considering having accommodations for transgendered students, showering and bathroom. And there was a controversy because somebody put out a flyer. And I could show it to you, but I didn't think. John, if you can see it, I, d I don't think it's in the folder, though. I think that the picture H1 is just in, on the disc. I found it afterwards. Mm -hmm. If you if if you go to the union leader website and look up Candia uh, 
Pedof here it is. Oh, this is <laughs> this was handed out. Oh. And wow. at the bottom it said www.gerardatlarge.com info. Oh my blog, Anne Marie Banfield. Now Rich Gerard, who is uh, you know uh, no, you know we could take a uh, act on vaudeville, you know, from the old days, <laughs> and uh, we don't see eye to eye. <laughs> And for four days, three days, he was blaming me for handing out this flyer. Complete fabrication. Yeah. Hey, uh, can you show the other one, uh, John, uh, H2? This is his website, the Candy of Flyer Update. There's yours truly. Oh, I hadn't seen this. Is yeah, that I got, still up? I got a call from one of our joint friends. We won't mention him. Yeah. And he said, oh, uh, drugs on the show blaming you for the flyer because it was a thousand dollar reward and remember i said oh he's yeah, put a thousand dollars on my head yeah i haven't been to candy since the last time i went out to the beach right, right. <laughs> and the thing is this friend and i'll tell you afterwards what it is you'll oh, really, okay. never heard that you know he didn't listen to it or anything yeah, yeah yeah so i listened to you know but for four days ray buckley or me were putting out this flyer <laughs> It wow. turned out to be a pastor of an evangelical church, the Gospel Baptist Church, huh. here in the former Franco-American Center, and uh, did, did they he, did it, he own up to it, the pastor? Oh yeah, because okay. Rich Gerard, the Candia police chief, went after him because you know Gerard Gerard, Gerard is uh, he's the second most powerful man in Manchester. Clearly, yes, us. yes, it's true. This little because nobody opposes this guy. I'm the only person. Matt's along <laughs> for the ride. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, before we uh, we're gonna have a video. I I, I recut an old show of ours, and I tried to get Matt's approval. That's yes. why we're having two episodes today. You're welcome to stay for the second one, because you know the thing. We only have reward thirteen because we only have I only have thirteen viewers. Well, twelve now because Matt, you're on. You come to the show so often. Right, but I do watch it <laughs> later on YouTube, so, so it still back counts. Up to yes. Yes. We yes. wavered a bit. We had fourteen, but my sister Doug was offended by something. <laughs> oh, that's Tom F bombing. But that's yes. a, uh, beside the point. Yes. But uh, Anne Marie Banfield belongs to some coalition. I didn't bring my notes. Uh, I can't remember the name, and I'm not going to look it up here. But they are opposed to transgendered, accommodating transgendered students. They are a Rich Gerard broadcasts on a station that's affiliated with the American Family Radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Cornerstone Action. Yeah. Cornerstone Thank Action. You. Yes. Cornerstone Action. I think you, you've just sm you just smiled. <laughs> Rich Gerard broadcasts on a station that covers. Uh, it's all American family. It's called New Hampshire Family Radio. Yeah. It's some, um, from what I understand, from sources, it's just a sham. They got some, you know, old pastor out in Amherst to be ahead of the Shell, you know, the Shell Corporation. Really? Oh yeah. Interesting. And then uh, it it all the program is American Family Radio, which is the American Family Association. Now somebody knows radio says when Rich tries to you know ballyhoo his show, he uses ratings. Although. And what he's using is the American family radio right, throughout right. the entire country. <laughs> right. But, you know, that's another thing. Uh, American Family Radio is the broadcast division of the American Family Association. The Southern Poverty Law Center, Morstees, calls it a extremist organization, anti-LGBT. Oh, yeah. And the why it's extreme is because it uses out-and-out -out lies, yeah. fake science and everything. Now, I think it's human rights HRC or something. Human, Human Rights campaign. Watch? Human Rights... Human Rights Campaign. Campaign oh, yeah. calls HRC. it a hate group. Yes. Now, yeah. when I mentioned I've this... called it that, too. ...to the board of the school committee, oh, Gerard, you know, go, going well. Oh, I'm just on the stage. Uh-oh, we're going to... Uh, Matt, you have to... Uh, it, Matt is actually a professional hypnotist. Maybe you should hypnotize me for the <laughs> shows. Yeah, but I like this kind of stuff. This is interesting. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, want, I want a sports show. Classic <laughs> baseball. Yes. Don't pause... Right about politics. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, you know, well, what goes on here? And nobody says, you know, I'm glad to have you on the show today. Because mm -hmm. in Manchester, New Hampshire, as Matt and I have talked about this, you can fix an election. You can do all sorts of outrageous stuff. Because the union leader never covers out anything, mm. they just get away with it. And uh, so this pastor is out there putting out this pedophile coming the pedophiles are coming. 
I didn't put it out. No. But the Candia police chief caught the, you know, yeah. investigated, found the guy. And Rich is giving the the uh, $1,000 to charity. Oh, God okay. knows what charity it would be. Maybe it's the uh, American Family Association he's giving it to. Maybe Glisten. Oh, that would be uh, nice. Yeah. That would I d doubt that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what does that do to a transgender LGBT child, to, you know, pedophiles? Yeah. It's horrible. Um, you know, these are so many of the LGBT youth are at an at they're at risk and they, well, yes. they they're at risk for a number of, of things, whether it's a s behaviors like try using drugs and alcohol, unsafe sex to self harm. And in the worst cases, um, you know, suicide attempts and suicide. Um, and really, they just want to go to school and they want to learn. Right. Um, but if you are worried about where you're going to go to the bathroom, you're not going to be thinking about physics. You're not going to be thinking about Shakespeare, right? You're worried mm -hmm. about going to the bathroom. And so um, schools want to accommodate that and give students a safe place to, to pee. And I'm, um, one thing I didn't say when I introduced myself, I have two kids um, oh, and uh, I have a daughter, she's 17. Um, I'll talk about her in a second. I, and I have a son who's 24. Uh, he graduated from Belmont High School in 2010 um, and he's gay. And uh, he was bullied and harassed a little bit. Belmont is a pretty a safe school, but mm. um, but they also had some students there who, who where it wasn't Belmont a safe Manch. situation. And he didn't tell me this until after he graduated, but it's okay that I share it now. I have his permission. But he did not use the bathroom for four years at school. Wow. So, so he would rush yeah. in the door and head into the bathroom every day. And I didn't know why until after. Oh, wow. It's because he did not feel safe in the bathroom. Wow. Because yeah. of bullying. You know, yeah. when you mentioned safe, because we were asking safe place, yeah. suddenly it dawned on me, oh, geez, even when, I, you know, when you're uh, like a freshman and you're in the bathroom with a senior, <laughs> whether you're straight or right, you're, right, you right. could have <laughs> yeah. trouble, you know, right, right. and just the light bulb went off. Oh, the bullying in a bathroom. You yeah, know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, if there's anywhere you're going to get away with it where there's no, no, Authority figures around. Unfortunately. The bathroom and the locker room. Yeah. Those are the two least safe oh, places Jesus, for locker rooms. Yeah. 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 A bunch of. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. it, that's part. You know, I grew up. Uh, my fr my friend Gary, who I mentioned, he used to be a bully, uh, and uh, he used to go after me. But uh, he, he had his last fight in the sixth grade over at Parker Barn, yeah. <laughs> where, where Hillary Clinton was. Just you know, I, I thought about. Oh, geez, I remember Gary just. <laughs> He's inside doing the things. Then he became my best friend in the sixth grade. Yeah. So I'm from the generation where you had to run the gauntlet. Hmm. Oh, high school. There's just Keith Hirschman. Uh, Alderman Keith Hirschman was a bully. Really? But, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, but yeah. he liked to fight and stuff. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> he never bullied me or anything, but uh, you just hear about. It. I don't know if bully would be the right word, but you know, I just remember there were some seniors because he was my age. And he used to fight Gary's brother, and then that's another story. But oh, you you know, because you're small, and these you'd figure out a, a new route. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you avoid get, where the big kids yeah. are. You get resourceful. Yeah. You you avoid like the football field. <laughs> like by the football field. Yeah. And where West High is, there's all like these warrens and lanes. So that's part of being a straight kid too, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But uh, transgendered is something else when you're yeah. dealing with it, mm -hmm. because you're dealing with somebody. Why don't you? Explain, you'd probably do a better job than I trans, explaining transgender. Okay. Yeah, so a, a transgender person is a person who, um, whose identity, whose gender identity or the way they want to express gender is different from the sex with which they were born. So mm -hmm. sex is a, this you know, biological, you know, you're born with parts and, um, and right from the minute you're born you get pink socks or blue socks. And you know, we, we're very much a, a culture that, that defines who we are through our gender um, but, and it's a binary you're a boy or you're a girl and, and so anyone who doesn't feel like that's really who they are um, and then particularly students who really feel like they're in the wrong body um, you know I'm really a girl in, in, a, in a man's body or a, or a, a man in a woman's body um, and so obviously going to the bathroom is you know a place that's very gender stratified there's a girl's right. room and a boy's room and um you know and especially if you're a student who you know a transgender young woman um who looks like a girl dresses like a girl to have to go into the boy's room is um, very dangerous and, and risky and um and so schools are trying to to accommodate those students mm -hmm. too 
<laughs> and that, that varies yeah. from school to school. Um, at my, my daughter, uh, Zoe, who I was talking about, at, at her high school, um, one of her very good friends is a transgender uh, woman, a, a girl, and she has been allowed to use the girls' room for the last two years, and there are no issues. She's mm -hmm. not sneaking in there because she wants to watch anybody go to the bathroom. She just wants to go to the bathroom, wash her hands, maybe, you know, fix her lipstick and get back to class. Right. And you know nobody at, at at that school has a has a problem with it. They haven't had any issues or problems. Yeah, and what, what school is that? Again? That's at Belmont High School. Okay, okay. You know, sci uh, science because it is science has changed so radically mm -hmm. since I just been a teenager. When I was uh, either thirteen or fourteen years old, uh, the DSM two. Mm. Which is this? Uh oh, what happened, John? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, can we get as a background? Let's get uh, the second background. What would it be? O D. If you get a chance, there we go. Oh, those are my kids. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because we got another background yeah. too. I like that. No hate. Yeah. yeah. When I was thirteen or fourteen, the DSM two. Uh, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the, you know, the American Psychiatric Association. Homosexuality was considered a mental illness mm -hmm. yeah. uh, until there was some pressure by gay activists and gay psychiatrists and psychologists. When did that change? Was that in the 70s when that changed? DSM-3, which was, yeah, they changed it. Okay. And people are still, like the American Family Association will claim, oh, well, that was just a result of political pressure and right. that. Well, because they, they come from a point of view that it's a choice, which I think mm -hmm. is absurd. No one chooses their sexuality. I didn't choose to be attracted to women. Why would I presume a gay person chooses okay. to, to be attracted to, to whomever they're attracted to? It doesn't make any sense. What's my, it? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, my, my son, <laughs> I, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this story, but he, he shared that he first realized that he was gay um, when he woke up one morning and he'd had a dream about one of the Backstreet Boys. Oh, no <laughs> And kidding. he was like... <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> funny. We, we won't bring up my Julie. Third grade. Yeah, I've been carrying the torch for Julie Christie since 1974. Yeah, <laughs> when I think they put Dr. Shivago on the TV, we've already had this. We're not going to go into that discussion now. That we can't show Don't her, look her now. greatest scene. Yes, <laughs> and I, I've been looking for a Shirley MacLaine. Uh, you know, all my life. Yes. I, uh, let's get and we were talking about Aunt Margaret the other day. Yes, yes. <laughs> but one of the things was when I grew up, uh, there was always the nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting genetics, because uh, one of the most famous cases that really blew away the fact that it's just culture and just well, you could raise a boy as a girl to be a girl was it was a botched circumcision and they gave the boy, I can't remember his name, somebody named Colapinto wrote about it because my friend Dave is not related to him. I oh, have a okay. friend Dave and uh, he was a Canadian. So they reassigned him and he went with somebody that was a famous psychologist of the time that claimed everything was just environment mm -hmm. and they raised him as a girl but he wasn't. Right. Even with the genitals oh. and everything. And he committed suicide oh. and it really refuted at that point started refuting that it's, it's just culture that it's not genetics but the MRI brain science I think it's very difficult for a lot of people even myself I've had to think about it uh, to the idea of a transgendered person mm -hmm. I was telling Heather in an email I've written a lot about I, I guess I was the number five person on the internet movie database and that's my claim to fame writing a they took it down about Kim Kardashian yeah and uh, we won't get into that either <laughs> and uh, I wrote something about Christine Jorgensen uh, which is one of the things people actually picked up on which in, a, in a way because uh, the first sex change operation was in 1930 wow really? and oh yeah huh. it was in Britain it was a ma uh, I think it was a male to female because I guess that was the, yeah it was e the uh, female to male was harder to do. Yeah. And at the time, Europeans always want to classify everything. And you know, a lot of people that are critics of European, you know, white male culture, because the Europeans classify Moors from Africa who were black as Caucasian, because you know they had beaten the, uh, the whites for a thousand right, years, right. And had Spain until they got knocked up. So, and one thing it was said at the time that a 
A homosexual is a woman in a man's body because no man can really, you know, want to have sex with a man. Mm -hmm. And we were t we talked the discussion. This was ten years ago. Yeah. And you know, people were talking about that, and that was part of the idea of the first sex change operation. Mm. And at the time, this is before MRI. You know, the science with MRIs is just exploding. Yeah. And uh, like I was telling you. You have to rethink your thinking about certain things. Yeah, everything is changing so much. But there's still this whole the, the, like uh, genes express themselves. Even you change even while we're living. Yeah, yeah. but there's the, the, but there's also the junk science that's out there, like the the gay right. reparative therapy oh and things gosh, like yes. that, which is just let's insane. get we'll so, talk about so that. damaging. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, just awful. Anne Marie stuff. Banfield, you know, with uh, that Cornerstone group, they were against a bill that would outlaw gay conversion therapy. Now, there is a evangelical church in Auburn that in 2011 was sponsoring a group called Exodus International. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of them? Mm -hmm. It's a anti, what is it called? It's a gay, con it's, I, it's a group of former gays who have convert, you know, who've seen, I don't know, seen the light, right, moved right, by right. the spirit. Yes. In the church, one of the- Jesus took their gay away. One of the <laughs> proofs of God is, you know, speaking in tongues. Yes. Which, if you watch my show enough, you'll probably see I speak in <laughs> tongues often. And uh, they sponsored in 2011 an event, you know, gay conversion, oh, you're not really gay, you can, we can... Pray the gay away. Yeah. Right, pray yeah. the gay away. But it's more than that because it's a business to... Oh, absolutely. One, absolutely. I think American Family Association used to have a gay conversion business. Yeah, it was a whole industry. For six million bucks, and it went bankrupt. And Exodus International ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. They're doing this not just for faith; they're doing it for money. Of course, like so many it's evangelicals. A it's a scam. Like uh, Marcus Bachman, Michelle Bachman's husband. Mm -hmm. He's a big purveyor oh, of that. Yes. He runs a whole clinic. And if you've ever seen Marcus Bachman and heard him speak, it's pretty easy to figure out what's really going on there. That dude's running from something, and you well, don't you need mean, a psych degree to figure out what it is. See, but, this, uh, is how, this is how we think. <laughs> yeah. As I told you. Uh, 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 <laughs> let me see if I can. <laughs> Hey, we're going to have the hour. We'll, we'll, we'll forestall the, uh, John, we're going to forestall the uh, Gatsis uh, gubernatorial gala, too, because uh, uh, I had a, sh uh, well, a shot, two shots over my bow today from, yes. from the mayor. When the mayor doesn't like me, he, uh, he, he has his way. He lets you know. Yeah. When you get a little too close. <laughs> hey, Chris, where is Chris Sununu's office? He might want to find out about that. That Well, we're not going to get into that. Remember, we can always edit this stuff. I edit one of the shows. I don't. Were you on the Panama Papers? Yeah. <laughs> I got down to a half hour. The other really? half hour is just... Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, I probably should call John in a bit. But talk about... You two talk about junk science. Because this is, what, this is why the Southern... Uh, Poverty Law Center calls the American Family Association mm -hmm. an extremist group because it's not based on science. Right. And what I was trying to say, we all change our idea, our ideas, like you know, Rich Drudd strutting around and challenging into a fight. Mm -hmm. it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Is this, this is just the way they think. This guy must be closeted. And you ask me, oh yeah, sure he is. You know, because we're all experts. <laughs> we're all, all experts. And uh, oh, I'd love to show one of these clips. From Myra Breckenridge. Who's uh, is that an, an actress? That's a familiar name, but I'm not sure. Myra Breckenridge. Well, yeah. we'll talk, talk about junk science. I'm going to call John. Okay. We can do a whole another. You're always welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can they go um, on forever. I do know. I do know. There's been some research about uh, uh, kids who are are abused. Um, uh, boys, in, in particular, I think, and I haven't I haven't looked at it this closely, mm -hmm. but they're uh, apparently. There is some evidence to suggest that there may be a correlation uh, with boys who are, are sexually abused, uh, who uh, are, are then, uh, you know, come out as, as gay. Um, so there may be a, a slight window there where there are some people who, again, with, with the whole nature versus nurture, some, some people who... Couldn't uh, it be your proclivities might be gay and then you're taken advantage by an older person? Right. Well, that's right. that's the thing. There's no way to prove... John? To prove that. Yes. John, is no. Oh, we have John Pendergast. Is that you, John? 
That is I, yes. Okay, jo let me get your picture. We're having a discussion about gay conversion therapy and junk science. Uh, we're gonna yes, put. I've been, I've been watching actually. Okay. Oh, good. The, uh, I don't think we're gonna go with uh, the Myra Breckenridge theme today. <laughs> <laughs> How about J One? That's uh, jo uh, our other John Eric. Hello. That's yeah. I'm here. John Eric is our. <laughs> there we are. The, there we have is. your picture up, John Pendergast. John, okay. why don't you tell uh, the audience here at Ward Thirteen about yourself? How do we know each other? Uh. You mean me and John Hopwood? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm watching you, and I didn't realize that it's on a oh, delay there. Oh, there's uh, a delay, yeah. At, at, um, John, you got to not watch it, because uh, I already told you the e the delay was 20 seconds. I think after it's Tom more. f bombed, we probably got two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think, <laughs> okay. I think so. I know John from so the I should probably stop oh, watching. Okay. Anyway, we met in uh, outside Stuttgart at the Stuttgart Army Airfield in, I guess, 1987. Right, we were in the same MI unit, 2nd MI Battalion. Yes, indeed, uh, where I had been sent because the Army decided for me to learn Russian, and oh. so I, I guess I did a halfway decent job, although I'm not sure that the Army paid any attention to how anybody's Russian actually was. Jo John, I, fl I flunked out of <laughs> DLI. Huh. John, I flunked out of DLI, and I wound up in the live mission. All the people in my class that actually got through DLI with honors, they all wound up in a motor pool in Texas. And none of them made sense. I've heard that more than once, yes. So oh, that's the I'm argument. not sure what that says yeah. about my Russian ability, but uh, I've, I've held on to it pretty well. And do, anything else you want to tell the audience? Um, about, uh, about yourself about the Army or whatever. Or about, uh, How do you myself, say gay? Identifying myself. Um, well, I am, uh, I am gay, and I uh, served in the Army in that capacity, uh, very much undercover, if you will. Mm. Um, Did don't ask, well, don't tell help pretty you? Pretty much until I retired. Um, and following the time that when we were in uh, Stuttgart together, I was uh, then sent um, eventually to become an officer uh, and served as an officer for another 10 years or so uh, and finished up teaching at West Point, oh. uh, where I actually still teach now. Uh, and since then, I've gone back uh, to get my Ph.D. in comparative literature um, and completed that uh, last year. But so, were, were you in the closet th this entire time with the army, or how did that work? Well, from from certainly uh, the time I entered until I retired, which was wow. 2008. So you know, around uh, around uh, 20 years or so. Yes. Okay. Wow. Now, uh, John, why did you? Oh, this is a whole other. Uh, I'm still wondering why John even stayed in the army. To be frank, <laughs> John, I have to uh, share a. You know, we all started looking with the internet, Facebook. We started yeah, looking people up. I was always close to, you know, like uh, Lisa. I don't know if Lisa w Bennett was there, but you know, uh, Melissa and uh, were you there when Karen uh, Lazarus was there? Yes, I, I didn't know her well. I knew Lisa better, and, right. uh, and definitely Melissa very well. Yeah, Lisa and I lived together, and Karen and I we, we got radiated together. But that's another. I don't know if you were there when that happened, but I was uh, not. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a unit, though. Now I'm I'm losing my train of thought because yeah. I'm, I'm I'm tripping. <laughs> okay, you're, Matt, you're, you're reminiscing. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about Karen and Lisa. I I, but, understand, uh, I understand. When we started trying to find other people. We couldn't believe, you know, your name. I looked for you, and I couldn't believe that you would have stayed in the army. And you know, any intelligent person, why would they stay in the army? Did, Particularly somebody. John is highly intelligent, sensitive, and everything. Did you guys just reconnect recently? No, a few, a few years well, ago. Well, I, okay. I would, I would like to say that uh, I was very fortunate. I kept getting what I considered to be very good assignments, doing things right. that I really uh, believed in and enjoyed for the mm -hmm. most part. Hmm. Um, and, you know, when, when I do get that question from people, you know, well, wh why did you stay in the Army or why did you decide to take a career in the Army, I said, you know, I, I can't say that it's because I did anything particularly intelligent, but I was extremely lucky in terms of You're I mean, from leaving Stuttgart. I don't know if you remember this or not. I was just sort of picked almost at random uh, to start working on the treaty between the Soviet Union and the United States R on uh, short-range missiles. Oh, did you wow. go with Dave Yosha? Uh, so I did that for three years, you that, know, and I got to fly all over that, Europe. That and must have been fascinating. Former Soviet huh. states, and 
you know, who's going to get out of the army at that point? Right. <laughs> hey, that's how I lost my security clearance, but that's not another story. Oh, well, that sounds uh, like a good story. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I was covering up for the woman I loved. Really? Well, we committed adultery, and she wanted to keep her security. Ooh, this sounds like it. You're just full of secrets. This sounds like a great story. <laughs> I think only uh, uh, wow. a few people know about that. Oh my! But uh, she look, doesn't watch the show. So now what thirteen the heck? people know. But you know, <laughs> but I was looking for John, and you know, there's the name. Here's this guy's really intelligent. He's sensitive. I remember we were talking about you at one time, and they're saying, you know, we were wondering about you, and I said, geez, he's really smart. And the look at the books he reads. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, sure clue, you might be gay. But here's it. <laughs> Here you are at West Point. I think John could not have stayed in the military, you know, just because he's intelligent. Why would he be there? Right, but now right. we know. And then I saw he was the uh, the, uh, the the prof the teacher or whatever the person that was the that headed up the Glee Club. Oh, you no headed kidding. the Glee Club. I said that has to be John. <laughs> <laughs> and it well, was I, you. I wow. Them, yes, I wouldn't say that I headed up, but I, but I do work with them, yes. Well, uh, Lisa was a classically trained musician, and whenever I would sing, she would go crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> she says I'm tone deaf, but... Uh, John, is are, are you born gay, or uh, is it... Uh, and it, uh, and it, can you, through an act of will, change <laughs> yourself? <laughs> Well, it's interesting you ask that question because you may remember that, in fact, I did get married right. and have children. Yes. Um, and the woman I married was a woman you may remember from uh, from Stuttgart. Now, I haven't spoken to her about, you know, discussing our details. On okay, yeah. So I won't, uh, but she worked there, you know, in Stuttgart. And I think I, yeah. Uh, and uh, I would say it was definitely something of a sheer act of will hmm. um, that, uh, yeah, you know, we... <laughs> We developed a, I guess, I guess, normal heterosexual relationship, uh, and I maintained that. Uh, we had a second child uh, for, gosh, I guess that would be 10 years or so. But to be able to do that, wouldn't that make you, forgive me if I'm getting too personal, but this is already a pretty personal conversation, it seems. Uh, wouldn't that make you bisexual, effectively, to have been able to do all of that? I mean, I guess technically, yes. Um, I have to say, although I think about these things a lot, I can't say that I've studied them, you know, biologically or psychologically. Right. Yeah. Um, from what I've read, uh, I think it's um, who is it? Uh, somebody made the scale. Um, Kinsey. Kinsey. The Kinsey so. scale. Yeah. One yeah. to five or one to six. I think it's one, one to six, six, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, that nobody only, it's it, it's rare to be like exclusively gay or exclusively hetero. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're mostly. And that's my, that's going my understanding. Um, hmm. And I, I, Kinsey, that's, that's what right. the scale is called. Um, and, uh, you know, even going back into college, uh, the friends that I had who were gay, you know, they always said that I was a perfect three uh, huh. because I, I did, you know, find uh, women attractive. Okay. Um, but, hey, uh, can I share an anecdote? Yes. Do you remember when I came back from PLDC, I was mad at you? You told me you... Uh, you recall that, but go ahead. You told me you thought you were in love with Angie, and I was in love with her, so I got oh. really mad at you. Because, you know, Lisa had left for the States by that time. <laughs> Yeah, it, it so, doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't lead. We were to a lot we were attracted of, uh, to the same woman. Relationships, I guess, yeah. to, to, you yeah. know, to, to be in love with more than one person at a time. Geez, uh, uh, some people, I guess, it's normal, but we won't get into that. You know. <laughs> well, in libertarian circles, it's it's all about polyamory. Right. They're always talking I've about. I've heard polyamory. about that as well, but yeah. again, I, I don't know. The, I mean, the funny thing is that in a lot of ways, uh, and I guess staying in the military is a, is a clue of that. Um, I guess culturally. When it comes to music, literature, you know, art, those kinds of things, I'm a kind of conservative person. Hmm. Uh, and when it comes to personal relationships, I guess I am as well. Yeah. But you, it, so being a gay, uh, what, what do you think about conversion therapy? Do you think that uh, religion can change a person's sexual, uh, well, it wouldn't even be preference. Is that a, that's orientation? A, orientation. Yeah, that yeah. was a word that was used. Yeah, because years ago. because preference implies that it is a choice. That's a choice. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, change it. In, again, in my opinion, I'd say it, nothing can actually change it. Um, 
it will possibly influence how you personally decide to behave uh, because you can certainly behave in certain ways uh, as a matter of choice and, and preference. Um, but how you feel as you engage in those behaviors is not going to be changed by anything other than, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. And even that, I don't think, I mean, I have, you know, again, without getting <laughs> into too much detail, um, I'm, I'm definitely, I feel much more naturally myself living as I do now than I did when I was married. You have a partner, do you, uh, or do you have a partner? I actually yes, know the question. Yes, I do. I actually know the answer to that. <laughs> and you, you, lo you fell in love with him. Yes, absolutely. Um, and uh, he uh, is what we call um, a gold card homosexual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean he's a sex? He's had no experience with women ever before. Huh. Um, and uh, so it, whenever, you know, this topic comes up of, of that time when I was married and, and the, the things that happened in my life at that time, he, he gets a little uh, squirmish. <laughs> Squeamish, I should say. But he's fine with your daughters, of course. What's that? He's a, uh, f he's a, uh, uh, he's a, uh, I, I, I don't, uh, you're like a fa a stepfather to your daughters. Uh, yes, that's Sorry. true. Right. Uh, but that's a different thing. He knows yeah. them and they know him. Um, and uh, I think they, it, it's definitely not a paternal relationship. It's more like a, an older, you know, type of uncle. Vuncular, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yes, absolutely. And, and that, uh, is a good thing. It's a great relationship. Um, and, uh, it would be difficult for me if, if that were not a strong, healthy relationship between them. Right. What's the difference between, do you think, cause I know, uh, I know some people that are cl still in the closet mm -hmm. and they think, geez, if, you know, they're born in the fifties or sixties, right. what's the difference of being born in the, you know, before, let's say, uh, the millennials. Is it much? Is it easier to to uh, to know who you are? Um, I don't and know. Heather, you jumped to into know who you are because even with you know, like people, my 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 children's age, and of course the you know the, the college age students I teach right. uh, at West Point, um, they still go through periods of not really knowing you know how they fit in or, or right. not really understanding what their feelings are. Um, the only thing that I think. You know, much much better for them is that they don't have to go through as much uh, social um, stigma, you know, ostracism, ostracism as yeah. a result of it. Um, and uh, actually, at West Point, there is a uh, gay straight alliance uh, that I'm involved oh, with. Oh, wow. Spectrum. And the, the the most striking thing to me about both that club and about the uh, implementation of uh, or the removal, I should say, of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, from West Point was how it was just absolutely a non-event. Right. Well, because I remember, it, it's interesting, uh, I, for, I forget who the, the gentlemen were who testified in front of Congress uh, from the military, uh, the, you know, members of Dan the Joint Choi. Chiefs. Oh, okay. Was, was oh, right. right. Okay, thank you. And, uh, and, you know, if you watch the testimony, it basically could be summed up as, look, we're all adults here, it's time to make this change, and it's going to be okay. You know, and then, yeah. and you know, Let, well, let's be frank. It is okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Nothing terrible happened to the military because John, of it. <laughs> John, when I was in the army, military intelligence in the eighties, Field Station Berlin was like, you know, a fire <laughs> island or something. You know, there were so many gay people that served with us. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I can even tell. You know, I remember. When I was at the DLI, my friend was from the Deep South, and he, there was a gay guy hitting on him. <laughs> and he went and complained yeah. to our staff sergeant, and the staff sergeant laughed at him. Because he said, this is MI, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody really... <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I can well, imagine I mean, and, and I'm combat arms. I mean, again, this yeah. is a derisive uh, right. uh, term, but, you know, people called all the graduates of DLI Monterey Marys. Uh, <laughs> That, that DLI had. I didn't hear um, that, but I will embrace it. <laughs> In fact, uh, the Rich Gerard poster as Mae West yeah. that we're not going to use. <laughs> uh, we won't even get into say, that. <laughs> uh, again, without going into too much detail, that, that there wasn't that much of a, of a sort of um, gay underworld at DLI. It was there. Hmm. Um, oh, right. That, that's say, defense you know, No more than any other place. Um, and 
but I, I will also say this, that just oh the kind God. of people who were attracted to going to DLI, straight or gay, uh, the people that I met there, right. we met a little later, but you know the people who oh, yeah. met there. My brother couldn't really, believe it. for the it first time in my life, felt like I had found my people when huh. I was at DLI in Monterey in the 80s. Um, y- yeah. And it didn't have, you know, it had less to do with sexuality than with just a very, very open, you know, cultural mindset. Well, we're all kind of people looking for something, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. We're That's all true. on there a was, journey. There was definitely the, the, the whole searching thing and uh, not finding it at home and wanting to go elsewhere. So that, that was, you're right, that's another big part of it. When I went, uh, excuse me, when my brother came to visit me, he was career Air Force, he, said, it was, he was surprised. Not only it was like a college campus, but in my cohort, we all joined during the uh, Reagan recession. So everybody had a college degree. And then yeah. a little afterwards, the kids came in because of Reagan. See, we got our uh, uh, degrees because of Jimmy Carter and uh, mm-hmm. financial aid. Then Reagan took it away. So then you'd get the kids that couldn't finish their degree. And, you know, oh, you right. paid off your student loans and you got the bonus. Okay. But you'd meet many yeah. questing people. I didn't want to go to law school. I, I wished I had right. now. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, what can you do, you know? But... Uh, I just something that went off. Can you be gay and yeah. get a secure? When did, when did they stop using being a homosexual, as a reason to deny you a security clearance? Well, in the army, only after the uh, repeal of "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." Honestly, um, is that true? In, in DoD, wow. more broadly, I think it was sometime in the mid to late '80s. So at NSA and DIA and the other security agencies, um, that 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 was no longer an issue by either the late 80s or the early 90s, I've forgotten now which. Um, but, hmm. uh, but within the Army, yeah, it was still an issue until, until Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. I'm not surprised because we see our stories in the media of translators getting booted out who were, who were needed. Uh, that's a, I right. can tell oh, you yes. about that. I can actually no tell you. And that was, like I said, that was happening right up to the repeal, which was yeah. only... John, I can tell you about that because my, my friend was, uh, who's been a, another person I, who has actually been on the show... Uh, was at DLI. He was the assistant dean. They didn't want a lot of those people didn't want to go to uh, the Iraq War. Ah, okay. So right. you could use that and just get out. Oh, interesting. In, in fact, uh, I'm not going to go into any more details because I yeah. don't want to compromise them. Yeah. But a lot of that was who wants to go to the Iraq War? And you got a 72 week language. It's gold. And so there was a lot of that. And huh. believe me, he was very sympathetic towards the students, like MI people are. Huh. But. Were you ever in black ops? Oh, well, you, can, you can't answer that anyways. In black ops, <laughs> in black ops, uh, I know somebody very well who said they had a clearance 23 steps beh- uh, ahead of me. And when you go on the box, when I went on the box at NSA, you only had to a- answer six easy questions. Uh, when you're in black ops and really high up, they ask you every type mm. of lifestyle question. Who did you score? Who did you sleep with, this and that? Yeah. That's one of the reasons yeah. I fluttered, because I'd committed adultery and, oh, okay. and stuff. Yeah. But they didn't even ask. Really? Well, it's just a, it's just a shell game. Yeah. You know, there's something on your mind. I can tell you. They're I, more I, interested they're probably in, th- you know, connections with people overseas and, and why you're... Right, right. That's the six... I think that that's much more of the sensitive thing, certainly these days. That's the six uh, qu- easy questions. But huh. when you're in uh, ops, uh, your lifestyle choices will become a a bigger uh, a bigger thing. Yeah. Hey, ta- what do you think about uh, a co- in California, where I lived many years? Cherche La Femme, uh, Lisa, we went to California. Uh, I can no longer afford to live there. Uh, tra- accommodating transgender students. Can you would, would you like to tell us your opinion of that? Me right, and I, and is there um, any? Well, I do. I will say, you know, the army has begun looking at that. Uh, the second really, defense, uh, because of Obama, the force uh, last summer, right, uh, to at least study it. And the um, can you come the out in the separation of transgender okay. soldiers uh, okay. or uh, gender dysphoria <laughs> soldiers has been elevated all the way up to an undersecretary. Really? So that it can't be used as just a, you know, as a, a targeting kind of mechanism any longer. Um, are there transgender students uh, at the military academies, and are there transgendered soldiers, sailors that have come out? Um, I am aware of an Air Force um, enlisted.
wounded right. soldier who is uh, male to uh, female to male, um, and he is currently being allowed to continue to serve. Hmm. Um, at the uh, at the academy, there's nobody who's truly transgender. Um, right. There are a couple of people who have privately said that you know they feel that they identify as being you know transgender. Um, you know, but they have not taken any steps to to actually physically change anything. And as long as they don't, the army doesn't really have okay. a problem with that. Now, um, can I just ask you a question? Uh, West Point students can't get uh, married, but there are now gay, is gay marriages in the in the service, right? Yes. And they're sanctioned by the mil it's, Department so it's, of Defense. It's not an issue since right. they can't get married anyway. <laughs> now, are these rules? This is because of President Obama. Right. This is by executive order because he's he is the commander in chief. You can't refute that he has those right. powers. Right. If uh, if uh, Mitt Romney had been elected in 2012, do you think he would have been as liberal? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I do think that uh, don't ask until. Well, let's see. Yeah, that would not have been eliminated because that was under the second term. Um, right. So. Yeah, that would have been, you know, a very different situation. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any questions as a uh, Heather, as a parent of, uh, you know, a gay son or anything? About the military? <laughs> no, or, 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 anything or anything to John, to John you know, his <laughs> journey. Um, not that I can think of right now. I'm an Army brat myself. So oh, you are? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. My dad was in the Army. I, 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 I just started reading a Reflections in a Golden Eye by Carson McCullers. It's a great movie with Marlon Brando uh, playing a repressed homosexual. He's a military yeah, I think officer. The movie is great. I've never read the story, actually. I should. She's a great writer. I uh, love Carson I, McCullers. Oh, yeah. And I just started reading it. You know, she's a beautiful writer. But Brando, you know who was originally going to be in it? Montgomery Cliff, who mm -hmm. was, right. would have been typecast in it. You wouldn't think Marlon Brando, but geez, hmm. he's, he's brilliant in it. I was watching. He is. I completely agree. Right, Dan. And we can have you back on the Myra Breckenridge show. John Houston, the director who directed uh, Reflections in a Golden Eye, act plays uh, one of the characters. Really? <laughs> yeah. I have to admit, I love camp. Yes, yes. I was telling, uh, you know, Susan Sontag in 1964 wrote a uh, famous article about camp, the camp sensibility. Yeah. Yeah. Myra Breckenridge is a novel by Gore Vidal. Well, we're going to do some... Call John, you'll be back on the show. Tell us what you're going to talk about on the show. My you mind come skips. back the next time? <laughs> right, when you do come back, we're going to talk about Jean d'Arc. Uh, yes, well, I, I do want to talk about uh, my uh, dissertation, uh, which was about Joan of Arc. Right. Um, specifically about Schiller's uh, take on Joan of Arc uh, that he created in a play in uh, 1801. Uh, and why he did what he did with Joan of Arc's story, because he departed quite radically from, from history. Hmm. Jo uh, and jo and yeah. what happened with that story after Schiller, uh, because several right. other writers and composers uh, took his story and, and ran with it in various ways. Hmm. The, the most famous play, uh, uh, Shaw, St. Joan, in the English language, what's that, 1920? And she was yet yes. a saint. He had to retitle it. She became a saint in 1928, is she the patron? I don't think she's the patron saint of France, but would you say Joan had issues with gender? Oh, definitely. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know that she would, she certainly wouldn't have turned them terms to those issues the way that we do today. John, um, could you, uh, she, John Eric, can we see J2 if you get a chance? John Eric, sorry? if you get the picture. It's of uh, Jean with the, uh, with the cardinal. Yes, yes. Ah. Um, she's that, got her hair uh, there. Yeah. Did she? Do you think she might have been transgender? It's possible. Right. Um, I think she was. There are some people who say that she had a particular kind of physical um, disfigurement that actually hmm. made you know her her feminine uh, genitalia not fully developed. Oh, that she was a hermaphrodite? Um, no, that's you have both. Okay. Not a hermaphrodite. Right. Um, a eunuch. But it was some sort of What's other. Issue with uh, with with the genitalia. She might have had too much testosterone or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, so um, 
we're engaging in the historic, uh, historical, you know, fallacy by going back and trying to recast. Mm. But she's, it's a very interesting story. And we'll have you yeah. back on again, John, uh, I think great. in May. Make sure you get yourself, uh, you know, the clearance from West Point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice so we don't you, get in your trouble. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Heather, why don't you wrap guy. up uh, the show? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you can handle the closing, Heather, okay. if you don't mind. <laughs> well, we can't, we can't go with our original closing. I was hoping they were going to close Ward 13 down, and they probably would. You uh, can go on the <laughs> Ward 13 with John Hobbit Facebook page. You can see all the videos yes. and more information about Prom Out Loud. Yes. Why don't you just, once again, tell the audience okay. about it. Yeah, so Prom Out Loud, uh, Glam Rock and Glitter will be taking place on uh, Sunday, April 24th, this Sunday, 7 to 11 p.m. Tickets are $10. Um, you can purchase them online. We have a Facebook page for Glisten, New Hampshire, um, and, and there's a link there to get the tickets, $10. Um, also available at the door until they're gone, until we sell out. And 7 to 11, Pappas, or Puritan Back Room, Pappas Function Room. Right. Excellent. And I'd like to ask you for any student that it feels that they can't go because of mm -hmm. pressures either from parents or what should they do? Who can't go to? Who can't, you know, for whatever issue that maybe you're in a Christian, mm. so called Christian household. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what should a, uh, a gay youth that would like to go or would needs help, let's put it that way, okay. who should they go? Who should they? put their hand well, up. Well, I mean, if they're fortunate, there could be somebody in their school. Um, so a lot of times students will find a teacher, a guidance counselor, a school nurse. Um, some teachers will have a, what, a safe space sticker or, or something in their room, a rainbow flag or, or something that indicates that they're a safe person to go and talk to. Um, so that can be a really mm. good support. And I think in any school, there's going to be somebody like that. Most schools in New Hampshire, a lot of schools have a GSA, not all schools, a Gay Straight Alliance okay. Okay. Um, that yeah. students can go to. Some, you know, some students are, are Is going there a to, website or organization? We have to really wrap oh, it up. Oh, yes, yes. For GLSEN, uh, GLSEN, uh, GL... S-E-N dot org. Okay. okay. And once again, you can go on Ward 13 with John Hopp and find it. And Matt, you're going to put the show up on your site, of Absolutely, course. yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd love to have you back because I know you're a writer and a poet, too. That's are true. You not? <laughs> well. I would like more to talk about stuff like that than politics. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Till next week. Stop it. You know... I uh, didn't want to reveal this. Oh, I'm curious now. But I know that, uh, you know, Gerard he is like at the forefront of doing away not only with steam because it doesn't fit his proclivities or whatever, <laughs> but of uh, screwing the West Side, which he used to live on, and doing away with West High School. So, huh. in honor of Mr. Gerard, who after all, as an at-large member of the school board, represents everyone. They are going to, this year, they are going to do a parody version of Bye Bye Birdie called uh, Say Sayonara Stinky. <laughs> and they Very are nice. welcoming any contribution for lyrics on any of the songs. Yeah. I'm particularly thinking of the famous telephone song where it's like, uh, what, how does it go? Like, all right, I don't have the note, but I, let me do it by myself. And then we're going to end with the telephone song from the 1963 movie, Bye Bye Birdie. Ah. You've seen Bye Bye Birdie. Actually, I never have. Jesus I've never seen it. Christ. I'm not a big musicals Jimmy. guy. What is it, I, I, love the, I love the sound of music, and that's about it. Sound of music, music surprisingly, is a good thing. Yeah. As Rich Gerard could tell you, anything with Nazis is a turn <laughs> Now, now, how does it go? There's wow. a song where all the girls are talking and they're yeah. all on the phone, and then suddenly this 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 adenoidal uh, uh, post pubescent teenager comes in and how how old Mrs. Wiedemeyer? This is Rich Gerard. Can I speak to Little Mel? <laughs> Jeez, I think we let the cat out of the bag. Oh here. boy! Hey, John, let's end it with <laughs> Bye Bye Birdie.
Did she kiss him and cry? Did he pin the pin on? Or was he too shy? Well, I heard they got pins. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping they would. Uh -huh. Got to live it at last. He's gone. So it's ready for good. Hello, Mr. Hankel. This is Harvey Johnson. Can I talk to Penelope and... Is it true about Kim? Penelope? I just knew it somehow. About the prom? I must call her right up. Saturday? I can't talk to you now. Don't you know it. 